court's order granting um, the motion to compel discovery from Mr. Combs and uh, Combs LLC. Uh, that was in September of 2019. Now, Mr. Galini has, uh, and then separately, we set for today our motion to strike um, Mr. Uh, Combs's uh, counterclaims that were filed um, on August 31st, uh, just before we had our last um, here, our trial setting in September. Uh, Mr. Galini has pointed out that he doesn't think that my motion for discovery sanctions was properly set and noticed for today. Um, and that he was under the impression that it was only the motion to strike and for sanctions in relation to the motion to strike that was before uh, consideration of the court. So I've got two issues. I've got, I, I want some costs for my client in relation to discovery and the court's order from September, 2019. And then I've got a motion to strike, but you know, Mr. Galini is uh, suggested that we did not properly notice the motion for discovery sanctions for today. So I, I, I think that it's only fair that we resolve that issue. Lady. Uh, Your Honor, if we look at the emails back and forth with Rhonda and the notice of hearing, it just wasn't set. And the first I heard about that being set at all was a, a call with counsel whenever I was going to my hearing in Denton this morning. Um, and I just got back from my hearing and pulled up the notice and just confirmed with her probably 15 minutes ago. I said, I just looked at it again and saw that the motion to strike amended pleas and counterclaims and motion for sanctions which is all the header of the plaintiff's motion to strike was the only things that were set for today. Um, I'm not opposed to us having a, a discussion because I think the only thing that was left reserved on that motion to um, for sanctions or on discovery uh, was that on the order was that you were going to reserve uh, costs and, and sanctions on that. I haven't prepared for that yet, but I'm certainly happy to have a discussion on that. Um, and counsel and I have started to discuss that just in our con conversation this morning. And so, you know, I'm not opposed to having a conversation, but I did just want to bring that to her attention. It's not a gotcha or anything. I just, first I heard about it was this morning and on my drive. And so it was, and I just met, brought that to her attention literally when I got back and saw the notice because I just wasn't aware of it. And it was not set. Uh, I'm not. Was like it, said, was it set, Miss Farrell, or what, what's the story? Well, I, I think I think it's ambig. I think it's unfortunately ambiguous because I had a motion for sanctions, which was a motion for discovery sanctions as a follow up from your motion to compel discovery back in September, right, of 2020. I had that motion for sanctions. Then I had a motion to strike, which included a request for sanctions. My instructions were that the motion for discovery sanctions and the motion to strike would be set. But the, the way that the notice, I mean, that, that's what I thought we were doing. I thought that, that um, Ms. Pinson's um, setting for us said there was a motion, a motion for sanctions and, and comma motion to strike uh, Mr. Galini's motion for sanctions, which he's um, graciously passed. Can you, can, you, can you share screen your uh, notice so I can see what it said exactly? Sure. It's going to take me just a second. And Your Honor, I don't think it's any fault. It's just the header of, on the motion to strike is the same exact thing as the hearing setting. And the other motion was called motions uh, discovery sanction for discovery sanction. So they're just titled different and they have different meanings. Can we just take a look at it and see? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Can you, when I, when I go to share screen, I'm not getting. Let me see, I thought I enabled it. I enabled it, out, so I'm not. You've enabled it, but I, I think that perhaps the issue is uh, the firewall on my 
system. It's not if, letting if me do it. Work, can I, can I point? Anymore, I can hold it up. Yeah, that would be helpful. And I, I've got it in front of me too. I'm just really, I'm sorry that I can't share it. It was filed on at Is 3, that close enough to see? 3 p.m. on 316. Let me see. Probably clear as much. Let's see, filed by the notice of hearing. And I think both of us can at least state what the what the actual notice is. Yeah, I, I think that's unclear too, Ms. Farrell. So let's just hear the one and we'll hear the other one later. Okay, that's fine with us. So um, I, 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 I don't really, <clears throat> I don't re require or request sanctions in relation to the amended pleadings. However, it is very important to my client. And I think that within uh, the, the requirements of the law to strike the counterclaims that um, Mr. Combs filed um, on August 31st. The court will recall that we had a trial setting for September the 7th um, at 10 something PM on August 31st. We received these new counterclaims against my clients um, as well as an amended answer. My issue is not so much with the amended answer because those address issues that are well known to the parties. However, um, the affirmative claims that were filed uh, on August 31st um, are, are novel and uh, dep there's been extensive written discovery, depositions have already been taken and at no time did my, uh, did my client Diane Combs or Larry Renninger um, have uh, affirmative claims against them. And so I think that is, uh, as, as I say in my motion to strike those counterclaims, uh, the, Mr. Galini should have, and his client should have sought leave from the court um, to file those, even though it was August 31st under rule four, uh, the, uh, the, the time for, uh, filing, um, adding new claims had, uh, that it should have been done prior to August 31st, that that is, uh, within the, the, the set or out with the seven day window, they absolutely do operate as unfair surprise. It's prejudicial to my client to go to trial, which is now set for, uh, next week, having to defend against counterclaims that uh, after two years of litigation were only brought up, you know, seven days before, before the, the trial date. Uh, no discovery is, is being conducted. The discovery is closed. And um, I, I just think it's um, that the, the court really is, is bound to either strike the counterclaims completely or at least bifurcate those into another proceeding. Response? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, first off, if I can, on the motion that we're not going to hear today, I believe we have a pretrial set for later in this week, and we could probably fix that in like five minutes in that one. I don't want to act like I'm trying to, like I said, surprise the court or anybody. It just wasn't made aware. But if her and I can't work out something between then, I'm not opposed to just trying to get that part knocked out then. Um, you know, I just don't okay. want to anyway. But as a response on that, uh, Your Honor, I filed a response with the court on behalf of our, my client, and we became aware of the counterclaim through depositions and through discovery. Um, in good faith attempts throughout this litigation, we've made multiple and multiple attempts to resolve it without the court's intervention, which is the whole genesis of, of what my client has done since even prior to this suit being filed. And the reason that the counterclaim had to wait till the eve of the deadline. And I argue that we were within the deadline. I will agree though, if it had gone to trial that day, we and there was a there was a hearing such as this prior to the so, trial. So you added these counterclaims back in August, right? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And and so why is this just coming up now? It's not, Your Honor. This was filed back in August of 20. 21. Well, why is it being heard now? Uh, that was a question that I brought up in my response. It seems dilatory to me, Your Honor. Well, and why, is, why is the motion to strike only being heard now? Yeah. Because the, the court reset, I mean, discovery is over, right? The court reset the, uh, our trial date. So on the, on the courts, we didn't request a, a continuance. And uh, an enormous amount of money has been spent litigating this case. We were ready to go to trial on September the 7th and had to down tools. And so 
the issue of striking, I, I guess at any time between August and now, I could have set the motion to strike the counterclaims, but we were continuing to negotiate in the hopes of resolving it. But I don't see like the difference it makes that, um, uh, what what is the difference between August thirty first and today? Right, the the the. I, mean, I guess, I guess the concern I have is that if you had brought it up in August, we could have allowed, we could have reopened discovery, we could have done a variety of different things to address the counterclaims. Uh, by waiting till now, we're kind of up against the the eve of a new trial setting, and it it there's no way to really address the issue, and so. Um, I filed the motion to strike immediately after it was filed. I think right, that, right, but but I, I don't hear things. I don't know any state court judges that do. I don't just go through my docket and go, "Oh, this has been said." It has to be set for hearing. Uh, I'm just wondering why it wasn't set for hearing between that point and now. As I as I said, that we were we were continuing to discuss with Mr. Galini the poss the possibility of resolving this. Um, I, I mean, frankly, Your Honor, I don't think that it is appropriate to reopen discovery in this case. Like you said, that that you could you could have reopened discovery and allowed uh, Mr. Combs to proceed on his counterclaims in this case when the counterclaims were brought up two years after the start of. I, I hear what you're saying. Two years after the the start of the case uh, to reopen discovery is incredibly prejudicial to my client. I mean, the court has already heard. Uh, the breach of fiduciary duty summary judgment and granted that it, it, it frankly didn't occur to me that that we there would even be a chance that we would have to reopen discovery on these brand new counterclaims or bring them for, yeah or bring Thanks, them for, for trial now your honor i faced the exact similar situation uh on the eve of trial when six days before trial uh plaintiffs amended their petition and added two new causes of actions in that time, I actually filed a motion to strike, and we had a hearing uh, within a, a reasonable amount of time before the very next uh, time. And at that point, uh, there was a short continuance and a limited window of discovery that was opened by the court to allow that to proceed on behalf of plaintiffs. And that was in this case, right? Yes, Your Honor. And that's how you ruled before. Ms. Ms. Farrell, if I did it in that case, I'm guessing why wouldn't you have thought I would have done it here? I, I wasn't the counsel when, when you did that. I was not it involved was not, in that. Um, it was, was it for your client or for a different Absolutely. Party? Yeah, it was for my client. And those, those issues were resolved. That was much closer in time to discovery was still ongoing. You know, uh, the, court, the court was still ruling on the on a motion to compel that my prior counsel had brought. It's a much different situation then now bringing the new uh, Ms. Farrell, I, I will say I don't really think it is, uh, but uh, I mean, I'm just telling you, I, I try to be as consistent, I've been doing this for a long time and I try to be as consistent as possible across, uh, across the board. And in a situation like this, uh, unless I feel like someone's been really dilatory, uh, I'm generally gonna reopen this at least one time to allow additional discovery to occur I've already done it once in this case, uh, so so given that I'm not gonna I'm gonna deny the motion to to strike and for sanctions, and so uh, I would have given you time to do discovery if this had been brought earlier, uh, but uh, I try to be consistent as consistent as possible, and that's kind of how I handle this, just in an abundance of fairness. And so you guys are set for trial. When is it next week? No, no. So you're you're not going to allow us to do any discovery on these on these new counterclaims. Uh, uh, you're set for trial. What are you set for trial? Uh, next next Tuesday, week, the twenty. Next Tuesday. I, I would have. I mean, I just don't know. I, how, I just, how how could you? I mean, what kind of discovery could you do in the next week? If if you had set this back in you know August September, I clearly would have allowed you to do discovery. I just don't know what kind of discovery you could do in this short a time period. I don't know what kind of discovery we could have done in that short of time period. Like it is totally inappropriate for my client from, to have from, to from, counterclaims from August to now. You mean that that's a seven month period? You could have done a lot of discovery. 
at enormous additional cost. Depositions has, have already been taken of all of the parties, right? I, I it's just, it's, I, I hear what you're saying, um, but there is not an obligate, like the obligation is not on us to set the motion to strike in a timely manner. It's on, it's on the other side, not to surprise us with brand new affirmative claims seven days before the first trial setting. The parties have prepared for trial at great expense already at least once. Ms. Farrell, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Um, if there is some type of discovery you think you could get done between now and the trial setting on Tuesday, I, I would be willing to consider that. I'm just not sure what you would, what you could get done. Exactly. And, and the, and, and the, the fact that new affirmative claims were brought two years after the fact, and we're going to be stuck with those because we didn't set a motion to strike fast enough seems I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, you. You seem angry, and I'm sorry about. Oh no, that. no, I'm so sorry. I, I apologize for that, Your Honor. I, I am very concerned that um, after. I'm, not, I'm just not sure why you didn't set this for hearing sooner. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know yeah. the strategy of this, or there may be some strategic reason you didn't do that. I, I don't know. I'm just telling you. I, in this case, I've already done the exact same thing once, where someone. Your side added it, or who who added additional claims? Your side added additional claims at the last minute. I gave them an opportunity to do discovery. I don't know why you wouldn't have felt that I would do the same thing the opposite way. I just I, I don't know what else to tell you other than this is how I always do it, and I think it's appropriate in the situation. And if there is some type of discovery, if you want to maybe take one of their people's deposition between now and the trial setting, I'd be happy to let you guys do that it's just uh, i'm not sure what else to tell you other than what i've already said so okay well uh, i think i I'm, I'm just gonna have to i'm just gonna have to accept that but um i i do think that we may want to take a, dep a an additional deposition of mr combs because he's raised these uh these new counterclaims okay. um and so i think that it's limited your honor I, i'm not opposed yeah let's let's do a limited deposition uh, how long did I set, set the other depositions for? It, it was, yeah, I think, believe, and I don't have the whole file in front of me. I believe you just had given 30 additional days, limited to the. No, I mean, how much time on the deposition do you think you would need? Well, the, the first question, how much time did, did was allowed for the, the others was the full six hours. I mean, I, I don't know if you want to. I, 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 I don't usually for the subsequent deposition, I don't usually give an additional six hours. Do you remember, Mr. Galini? Uh, no, Your Honor, we didn't discuss any additional time. We just opened, reopened discovery for limited for that for a period of 30 days, I believe. It was nothing different than that. We didn't so it was a lot broader than no, this. Yes. No depositions had been taken at the time. Um, okay, that okay, was, that makes more sense. Okay. I wouldn't usually give an additional six hours, but they haven't, done that. They, there was no depositions taken, then I would have run right. depositions. And so has your client already been deposed in this case, I assume? Yes, Your Honor. And how long was that deposition? Oh, I don't have that in front of me, too. It was not six hours. It was probably four. Okay, so uh, you can take a two-hour deposition of Mr. Galini's client uh, sometime between the now and Tuesday. And, Your Honor, I believe we have everything we need, I, you know, against... Uh, on our part, so we don't need anything, Your Honor. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm not going to give you extra discovery, so that's beside the point. I am concerned about this other motion. There was a motion. Uh, when do we want to try to hear that other motion? So I, I think it will be very brief, um, and I. This is a little bit off, a little bit off piece, but we had we had contacted Rhonda and then Darling about the trial date. And seeing if your honor would agree to a preferential setting, if you were to agree to a preferential setting, like in April or whenever you have time, that might give us some additional time to both do this deposition of Mr. Combs and to set the other motion for discovery sanctions. The, the so, look, let me, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm just looking at the trial setting for next the trial docket. We did have a special setting next week. It just went away, uh, and so it does increase the chances you might actually go next week. Cause if, 
the special setting was going to go, it was going to knock you your trial setting out. Let me just see where you are on the docket. We were number nine as of last week, Your Honor. Yeah, that can change rapidly these days. Let me see where you are now. I guess I should ask Mr. Galini, what is your position on a reset on this? Anna, um, we're not opposed to a short reset if it, if it is a preferential time uh, because my client is a, a chiropractor and we've got a, uh, the other sibling is having to fly in from Atlanta. I know that her clients both have professions in either medical field or a man, office manager at a furniture store. So and she's flying in from Houston. And so there are a lot of uh, uh, parts on this that make it a, a, a good thing you know, to do that. I don't foresee this taking more than a day and a half totally from jury selection to conclusion. We, we'd only just recently agreed to have a six person jury setting. Um, mm -hmm. That's something Mr. Glaney and I have been discussing for a while. He needed to get his client's approval for that. Um, and my, so one of my clients, Laurie is a nurse at a hospital and the um it's it's just a hard it's a hardship i think for both of our clients to not have a date certain so that they can get time off work and make sure they're going to be there so if it's if it's possible to have a preferential setting on a date certain that would be great for a six person jury yeah um you're number seven on the docket right now um One option, as I, if you wanted to agree to this, would be on June 28th, I could specially set you, uh, but you'd have a visiting judge, Judge David Evans. You'd have to agree to that. You mean the same David Evans from the good Tarrant County? No, 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 no. The, he was a Dallas County judge. He went on the... Uh, he was a jail. You guys are maybe too young. He was a trial judge until 2006, and then he lost as part of the big wave. And then he's taken over. He was on the Court of Appeals for a while. Then he lost there with the, with the big Democratic wave. And so now he's just doing visiting judge work. I, Your Honor, you're most familiar with this, but I will defer to Ms. Farrell on this um, since it's a jury trial. All right, so we have a couple options. We could do that. We could set you on November 29th. Uh, we could specially set you as long as you agree to a six-person jury if we're in COVID threat level red, uh, or we can set, specially set you next year, or we can just keep this trial setting. Um, I think of all of those options, I would prefer, I think, the June 28th special setting, even, even with a visiting judge instead of your honor, even though you are the most familiar I, I just think that that is the right balance between giving our clients some certainty and also getting this resolved. Kit? I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. Okay. All right. So June 28th, a special setting with uh, Judge Evans, uh, visiting judge. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that on the record. And a six-person jury, if, uh, uh, if it's COVID threat level red. Okay. So let me just go back to that exact date. Your Honor, is there a date that we'll never hear that COVID word again in the near future? <laughs> it's going to be impacting our docket for years, unfortunately. Um, but all right. Uh, so let's go on the record, Tony. Yes, Judge. We're going to specially set this case on June 28th. And I'll find a substitute court reporter. For, we'll need to find a substitute court reporter for that uh, with uh, visiting Judge David Evans uh, of Dallas County. And the parties have agreed to a uh, six person jury if we're in COVID threat level red. Uh, is all that agreed to? Yeah, so if we're not in COVID threat level red, will it be a normal 12 person jury? If that's what you want. Okay, that's great. Or either side, if either side wants that. Okay. 
Is that agreed to? It is, Your Honor. We did one at a time, Ms. Farrell. Yes, that's agreed. Mr. Galini. Yes, Your Okay. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Galini, give me an order on uh, denying the motion to strike, and that will give you a chance. I'm going to reopen discovery on the issue of the counterclaims. So, uh, Ms. Farrell, if you need any additional discovery besides this this six hour this deposition, you can do that. Only discovery that's reopened is on the counterclaim, so I don't want to reopen discovery entirely. And uh, anything else we need to talk about? Um, so then the to answer your question about the discovery sanctions, I will set that for hearing um, and send notice uh, for that motion separately whenever you have time. Sure, sounds so good. Now, now we've got a little bit of time. Yeah, we have a little bit of breathing room. So let me just look at one other thing. Your Honor, are, are all other deadlines that have to do with the trial setting date uh, switched to the date based upon June 28th? Well, uh, what do you mean? All, all discovery is still closed except for discovery related to uh, the counterclaims and Ms. Farrell will be able to conduct full discovery on those. Okay. And if there's any pretrial deadlines that were in place, those will be moved. Correct. That's all I was referring to. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Mr. Galini, go ahead and prepare an order on this. Share it with Ms. Farrell. Uh, make sure, Ms. Farrell, do you want to do it? Who wants to do it here? Do the order. Oh, Kit can, can do it. Do it. Okay. <laughs> so, go ahead and. Sorry, we talked over each other. I apologize. So, uh, you'll, she wants you to do it, which is fine. Okay. Um, so uh, make sure at the beginning of the order, it says that this hearing was heard on March 21st, 2022. Make sure that you uh, let uh, share it with Ms. Farrell. She'll have uh, up to six hours to six work hours to um, review it and uh, try to get it to me uh, no later than this Thursday. Okay, and Your Honor, would you like the uh, paragraph regarding uh, reopen discovery for the limited purpose? Yes, okay. include that and also include the special setting and the both parties have waived an okay. objection to the visiting judge. If it turns out that J Judge a Evans has told me he can do that day, if he can't, then we'll revisit this at some later date. Um, but I'll reach out, I'll try to reach out to him right now and just find out if he's available, make sure he's still available then. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, Tony, Ayana, our next one, I think, is at 315. So.